New Zealand is throwing out the welcome mat two months earlier than expected with our border reopening from July 31st. Bosses will more than easily be able to hire from a list of professions that have been hard to attract. People like surgeons and doctors, engineers, veterinarians and IT specialists. And there will be immigration tweaks that will make it easier for them to become residents. In areas like tourism and hospitality, bosses will be allowed to pay migrants below the median wage to attract the desperately needed lower skilled workers. International education should be back to normal from July 31st. Students will need more money to stay in New Zealand for the duration of their study. All this means that the country will be fully open to the world by midwinter, including our maritime border. Cruise ships can return from the end of July as well. Here's political reporter Amelia Wade. Classic COVID, the very disease the Prime Minister locked up New Zealand to keep out, keeping her away from the reopening. I'm having the very 2022 experience of isolating with my family. Zooming in over lunch to open the country after two years, a whole two months ahead of schedule. The doors will be open at the end of July, but who will be allowed through them is changing. We had an opportunity here to get smart about immigration and we've taken it. The cornerstone of the reset is this, the green list. To go straight to residency, you need to have one of 56 very specific jobs, like structural engineers, psychiatrists and vets. Then there's those who have to work for two years and need one of 29 jobs, like midwives, ECE teachers and farm managers. A bit too narrow, too prescriptive and... By the way, isn't this just the long-term skill shortage list kind of dressed up in a different form of drag? Immigration lawyer Aaron Martin is actually unimpressed with the lot of it. There's this internal lack of logic in what they're trying to present and what they're actually going to deliver. The Greens worried for other reasons that the government's created a two-tier system by only rewarding high-wage workers. It kind of feels like we are creating a white immigration policy, whether intentionally or otherwise. We've made no secret that we want to move to a higher wage, higher skill economy, give as many opportunities to New Zealanders. Uh, while we have low unemployment now, we need to make sure that we're preparing for a day where that might not be the case. But just because we're now letting all tourists in doesn't mean that they can get in. It currently takes five months to process a visitor visa. Have we suddenly magicked up 200 workers at Immigration New Zealand? The answer is no. How are we going to process visitor visas, residence visas, tourist visas, worker visas? No magic needed, says the Minister. We're confident we've got the resources. We've uh, employed about 230 more people to be able to process. New hires in a new online system has the Minister reckoning visas will be verified quickly. The visitor visas, we've said, are 20 working days. Now the countdown's on to see if that's actually the case. Kia ora, Amelia. So we're opening the door from late July, but there's still a restriction in the way. That's right, the final hurdle to get into New Zealand, the pre-departure test. And airlines are totally over it, with reports of passengers spending half a day and a chunk of cash getting the tests. And with our borders open to pretty much everyone and with no arrival restrictions left, the tests no longer make sense. The Prime Minister's guaranteed that they'll be gone by the end of July, and in fact probably sooner. But what's holding up their demise is that the plan for other COVID-19 variants still isn't ready. But when that is finally good to go, then it's bye-bye to the pre-departure test. Tēnā Amelia.